Hi, Frank Forrest, Product Manager with Carlisle HVAC Brands. Today we want to talk to you about the newest solvent-based adhesive from the Hardcast uh, group, which is our InstaGrip. It is an immediate tacking solvent-based product offered in a true red and a true black color, uh, made here in the USA. And we want to talk to you about application tools, uh, some troubleshooting, some maintenance items, and actually how to uh, set up your sprayer to spray this product. So through the magic of editing, we've swapped the pails out here. Uh, this red and black pail you see are from January of 2020, our original production trial. That is important, I'll explain here just in a bit why that is. Uh, really quick on solvents. Uh, one of the challenges that we see is, is a lot of the uh, products that are in this market space use hexane as their main solvent. And I just wanted to let you know that Instagrip is hexane free. Now back to the Instagrip products wanted to show you as you can see this is a true red and you can see that is a true black now a challenge we've seen is some products in the solvent based adhesive uh, market will actually have sediment that drops out of the the uh, product and settles on the bottom of the pail or the drum and it causes that sediment will plug up your equipment so what I wanted to show you was, you can see here with the red, no sediment. And you can see here with the black, no sediment. So why red and black? Why true red and true black? The, the main reason is for the visual indication of your coverage on the sheet metal, right? You'll be able to really easily see the red. Also with the black, you'll be able to easily see your coverage on that as well. Um, there's also another kind of a, a small thing that, that can be done with that. Um, in some cases, people use this as a small thermal break over the insulation pins on the uh, insulation side. And you'll see that obviously the black does match that insulation facer. The benefit you could have from using the black in the situation is you do have any overspray it's not as visible in the completed duct, duct work. We offer it in cases of one gallon, four by one gallon, five gallon pails, and 50 gallon drums. Instagrip red and black have a flame spread and smoke developed rating of zero zero, so it has a class zero rating. You know it's not gonna add flame or smoke if there ever was a fire. Coverage rate is up to 700 square feet per gallon. This is when you apply the product around 2.5 wet mills. Okay, application methods with Instagrip, you'll be able to use a brush, a roller, or you'll spray apply. What we wanted to show you with the brush application is obviously it's very easy to understand a brush application. You wanna make sure that you get the coverage that you need. One of the key things with this product is making sure that you're not, you're not painting a car, you're not painting a house, so you're not looking for an absolutely perfect and smooth application of the product. You want hills and valleys in order for that adhesive to bite in to the insulation. And then you just simply attach your insulation. So another option is to use a roller. Pretty self-explanatory as well, right? We're gonna get some adhesive on the roller and then we're gonna roll that on the surface once again, we want to make sure that we get some hills and valleys so that we're really getting a, a good bite on the insulation. And then we'll simply attach the insulation. Okay, so when you're brushing or doing a roller application with this product, remember it is a solvent based. The solvent will off-gas come out of the product quite quickly and it can cause some premature curing. So ideally, you want to make sure between jobs that you're putting the lid back on the pail, putting it on there tightly uh, to keep that solvent from off-gassing. Um, ideally, this type of product is suited for spraying uh, where it is captured in a, in a pump style system. And so we're going to show you that here shortly. For the spray application, we're going to be using a Binks diaphragm pump. This is a pail mounted system 
and Binks is a sister division of ours through the Carlisle Fluid Technologies Group. We do have a recommended adhesive delivery system document on our website that will actually have in the part numbers as well as your local Binks distributor where you can find the equipment locally. Um, the Binks, it's not required to use this Binks pump. If you have an off-the-shelf pump or you may already have a pump, that'll be just fine. The only thing we recommend is that you actually research the materials of the pump and make sure they're compatible with the solvents that are in Instagrip. So on a diaphragm pump, you'll have two pressure regulators. Um, this one here is going to be your product pressure, and this one will be your atomization pressure. Obviously, your product pressure is what pushes the adhesive through the pump, through the hose, and through the gun. And then your atomization pressure uh, actually will go through the end of the gun and help kind of splatter your pattern. In addition to your product and your atomization pressure settings on your diaphragm pump, you also have controls in the gun. So here is our air hose coming in for our atomization. This is our product hose uh, to supply the product to the gun. Uh, we have air control valve here. If you turn that clockwise, it will actually limit the amount of air going through the gun. Counterclockwise will open that up. I prefer to keep that uh, all the way open. Um, and then on the gun, we have this dial here is your product, uh, amount of product allowed to flow through the gun. So once again, clockwise, it will limit the flow of product through the gun. Counterclockwise will open that up. Um, and then at this very top one you see here, that is what's called uh, side control. And that actually controls the fan pattern uh, spraying through the gun. So the more closed clockwise uh, will be a round pattern and the more open will be a true fan pattern spray. So a good starting point is uh, recommend that you set your product pressure at 50 PSI and your atomization pressure at 25 PSI. What you're gonna notice on the atomization pressure is the gauge is slightly higher, but when I pull the trigger, you can see it drops down to 25. So it's important to note that each applicator is gonna have their own preferred settings on the equipment. So with this set to 50 and 25, and my gun adjusted for my preferred spray settings, we're gonna spray here. Notice the good even coverage. Also note the true red color. And one of the things you wanna make sure that you're not over or under applying the product is make sure that you use a mill gauge. Verify your application thickness. So what happens when your product pressure setting or your atomization pressure setting is off? So we want to show you that with, uh, with this system here. I'm going to adjust the product pressure up well, well above 50 PSI and so we can see that spray. What you can see is I've got really heavy coverage right here. So it's too much product. So let me adjust that back down. So I can adjust our atomization pressure just by adjusting this valve here on the gun. So what happens if we have no atomization pressure? we get a nice stream, which is uh, not good. So we will adjust that back up a little bit. If we have too little atomization pressure, you'd see that I'm not getting as good a coverage as I did on our previous spray. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust this back all the way out. And what happens if we have too much atomization pressure? Let me adjust this on the pump. All right, so let's see what we've got here. As you can see, we had minimal product, a lot of atomization pressure, and as you can tell, it's already cured. So if you have too much atomization pressure, you can actually cure the product in midair before it even gets to the surface. So let's talk about maintenance and troubleshooting. 
maintenance, you should have a preventative maintenance schedule in place for the equipment. It is an investment, so you should take care of it. Um, the pump manufacturer will have a recommended schedule for cleanings and what that cleaning process is. We recommend you follow that. In lieu of that, we recommend that you clean your pump after each pail of product or bi-monthly, whichever would occur sooner. Um, and what that's gonna entail is using mineral spirits or some similar solvent flushing through the pump, the hose, the gun, and everything. Uh, whatever solvent is available in your jurisdiction and then of course making sure that you uh, take care of those cleaning solvents in an appropriate manner when done. In regards to troubleshooting, the pump supplier or manufacturer should have a list of troubleshooting items to look through. Uh, of course, check, make sure that you have all the seals, you don't have any leaks anywhere. If you're seeing where you're getting too much air entrained into your spray, double check the seals, make sure your air connections are nice and tight. Um, and then if you see that your spray pattern is starting to adjust even though your gun settings and your pressure settings are staying the same, then you really need to look at the pump seals and the diaphragm seals in your pump. Having said that, thank you and happy gluing.